For art historians and modern day art aficionados, the mention of the name, the mere mention of his name, James Castle, conjures an image of someone who made the most of what he had. And what he had, well, wasn't much. Using whatever canvas he could find, sometimes that would be pages from magazines or used envelopes, and the soot from wood stoves mixed with his own spit, James Castle created realistic renderings and abstract interpretations of the world around him. James Castle was born deaf in Garden Valley, Idaho, and was entirely self-taught in how he expressed himself through art. His family home, after they moved to Boise, is now a historic site and a museum featuring his works. The latest exhibit, highlighted by photojournalist Kevin Esslinger, is called Hearth and Home. Who was James Castle? He was an artist who was born in Idaho in 1899, and he was born profoundly deaf. He spent his entire life drawing, and he used drawing as, I would say, a means of communication and also a way of exploring his inner and outer world. He's really well known for making work with soot and spit, which is actually the focus of the exhibition that we have up right now. I am Kristen Hill. I'm the Cultural Sites Program Manager. This is an exhibition at the James Castle House called Hearth and Home. He would mix more spit with less soot to create sort of a thinner, almost ink wash that he would apply with um, like blotted up pieces of paper or fabric, kind of a toning effect. And then mixing more soot in to create a more opaque, almost charcoal-like effect. And he would use hand sharpened sticks to apply, you know, sort of like a little quill. Turns out that um, saliva is actually very archival, and in all likelihood, if he had tried to do his work with water instead, it wouldn't have lasted. You look around and realize almost all of the works that still exist today were made on this property. So this is works that were made on this property from you know materials that his family was using when they lived here made out of soot that was burned in the family's wood-burning stove from trees that grew on the property. You know, it's pretty rare with um, museums that are showing an artist's work to be able to have this really defined physical connection as well. When I look at Castle's work, I just see this intense curiosity. I think of Castle as kind of like part artist, part scientist. He was always exploring, he was always experimenting, he taught himself linear perspective. I mean, if you look at this piece right here, um, this drawing of the house, it shows this incredible linear perspective and understanding of perspective that I think is really challenging even when you're you know, taught. One thing I really love about this drawing is that the inclusion of the power lines, you think about that as, you know, this is a changing feature in his landscape. As he's living here, this is something that starts to show up. His depictions of people are it's so interesting. It's really um, spans a pretty big variety. There's a little booklet of political candidates, and he has recreated them, and they have you know very lifelike faces and uh, features. And then he's pretty well known for making these little figures that have kind of square heads and are very blocky. They look like they're maybe combining objects with people. We could never say what was going on in Castle's head why he did what he did, but it's fascinating to look around and just wonder. It's hard to get a real strong sense of how deep his work goes until you've been exposed to it quite a bit. I learn more every single time I look. It kind of just feels like the deeper you go, the more there is to learn. The exhibit runs through the last Saturday in July. The museum is open Thursdays through Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. and is located in the Collister neighborhood on Eugene Street, which is just off Castle Drive appropriately.